Today I'm going to show you how to add a supplemental transmission cooler to your 350Z. Installing an aftermarket transmission cooler is a lot cheaper and easier than you might think and the key to that is these two hard lines that are coming out underneath the alternator on the passenger side of the engine bay. Those two rubber lines go from the hard lines and into the radiator and I'm going to use some crude diagrams that I drew up on the computer to explain what these are there for and how we're going to use them. First I want to try to explain this as clearly as I possibly can because when I was first looking into this, it was a little bit difficult to get a very clear 350Z specific explanation of exactly how to install this part. So as I mentioned in the track prep video, you're going to have two hard lines that come out underneath the alternator on the passenger side of the engine. I'm not sure which one is the in and which one is the out, but it doesn't really matter. The red hard line has a rubber hose that goes from it directly into the radiator, which has that internal liquid to liquid cooler in it. The fluid then runs through the cooler to the other barb at the bottom of the radiator, back out another rubber line, and into the blue pipe. So you have this continuous loop being pumped by the transmission through the radiator. So what we're going to have to do is intersect one of those rubber lines. So instead of it going directly from the hard line to the radiator, it's going to go from the hard line to the extra cooler that we add. So for my actual car, I disconnected the line at the driver's side of the radiator, and had that go under the radiator to one of the barbs on the cooler. So you have the line going from the blue hard line to our new cooler. It's going to snake through the new cooler, come back out the cooler, and then go around to that barb where the line originally connected. So all the fluid is going to go through both coolers, the one in the radiator and the one that we added. So you're going to get the combined cooling of both systems. Now this only works if you have these stock radiator. Because there's such a low demand for the automatics to have aftermarket radiators, they're not going to have the automatic cooler as an option. They're all going to be the regular manual transmission radiators. You're going to need a larger cooler to compensate for that loss. Here is my current setup. I have an aftermarket radiator. I have my external cooler that is a liquid to air cooler sitting in front of the radiator. And all it is is the line going from the red pipe to the cooler and then back to the blue pipe. No more radiator in the loop. Now I prefer this because I like keeping all of the cooling jobs separate. I don't really like the radiator oil coolers. I don't think they work. The 350Z comes with one for the transmission and one for the oil and I got rid of both of them. I do not like them. I want all the cooling duties to be separated to in each individual cooler instead of a bunch of shared duty because as one system gets overloaded, then everything gets overloaded. This is the cooler that I use on my car. I'm using it both as an oil cooler and a transmission cooler. It is an excellent design. It's not one of the cheap designs with just a little snaking tube going through some fins. It's the same style that you're going to get on the very expensive oil and transmission cooler kits that cost several hundred dollars. You can get it all day for less than $40. They come in three different sizes. I'm running a larger size as my transmission cooler and a medium size as my oil cooler. Really, I would recommend going with a larger size for both. It comes with everything you're going to need to install this on the car. You can either use the mounting tabs or you can use the provided hardware to run it through your radiator. That's not my preferred method, but you can do it. You will, however, need a different size hose. The hose that comes with it is great. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just slightly too large for the barbs that are on the hard line for the 350Z automatic transmission. So you're going to have to reduce it from the 3 8 inch barb that is on there down to a 5 16 of an inch hose. The way I did this on my car is I had a 5 16 inch hose running from the barb underneath the radiator. I have a 90 degree brass fitting that goes from 5 16 on one side to 3 8 of an inch on another. And I have a short length of 3 8 hose going from that barb into the transmission cooler, which is mounted with the barbs facing down. The two 90 degree fittings allow me to cleanly install this while also changing that hose size. Here's a good shot of the track prep video that I released last November when I first installed this new cooler on the car. You can see how I've got the barbs facing down with the lines coming in on the bottom underneath the core support. You could easily have turned it 90 degrees and brought the lines across in front of the radiator, whatever you think is easiest. 
I've got those 90 degree barb fittings that step up the 5 16 line coming in from the hard lines up to a 3 8 of an inch required to go in and out of the barbs. I have had zero issues with the lines as long as you get quality automatic transmission fluid lines that are designed for the pressures. You shouldn't have any issues. I haven't had an issue with the worm gear clamps or the brass fittings. Everything has worked perfectly over many track days and some daily driving and a lot of abuse. It's done great. I've got it mounted directly to the core support across those four different bolts on the bottom. As long as you're mounting just that way, you shouldn't have any issues putting a vertical load on the stacks of plates. If you mount both the top and bottom panel to something on the car, you're going to want to use some rubber isolator so you're not pulling the plates apart and causing a bad leak. I used to have the cheaper style where it had a tube snaking through all of the fins. Really, you're only saving about five or $10 for a vastly inferior cooler. So just go ahead and buy this one from the start. If you have any questions about this, drop it in the comments below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.